Hello everyone, I hope you're doing it really well and thank you so much for choosing to watch this video. Over the last week, for a few days of that week, I've been out doing some wildlife photography in various places and I've been capturing quite a few images and some video footage using this lens here. This is the Fuji XF 150-600mm lens. And I realised during this last week that it's closing in on approximately a year since I purchased this lens. So I've got a lot of experience with it. And in this video, we are going to first of all talk about my thoughts on the lens after a, a year of ownership, a year of use. And then we're going to have a look at lots of the photographs and some of the video clips as well that I've captured during this last week. I'll point out now that this is not a full review video of this lens. This is a video covering my impressions and experiences with the lens based on almost a year of use. And I'm also going to cover a few questions that I get asked quite regularly about this lens, such as the variable aperture, uh, is F8 any use for wildlife photography and things like that. So we've got lots of interesting stuff to cover. I'm going to show a lot of photographs that I've captured over the last week and some video clips too. However, I have done a full review video on this lens. I did that quite some time ago now, so it'll be interesting to see how my thoughts are now versus that. If you're wanting to see a lot of detailed information about the lens, a full review, see uh, examples of image quality, video quality, uh, talking a bit about the variable aperture, I even cover the points in the focal length range at which the aperture changes. I give my thoughts on this lens compared to the XF 100 to 400 millimeter lens, which I owned. There's just an awful lot in that video. I talk about the lens build quality and so on. So if you want to see that video, I'll put a link at the end of this one and you can certainly watch it. And I'll also put a link in the description below. But for now, let's get on with my first year impressions. Back when I purchased this Fuji lens, I was very confident that it would be an ideal lens for my wildlife photography for the types of things that I like to photograph and how I like my images to look. I really thought it would be the best lens choice for me. And today, after almost a year of use, I'm happy to say I still very much feel that way. I think it's been a fantastic purchase for me and the lens has never let me down. I've been really impressed with its build quality. I've been using it in all sorts of weather conditions. I've been using it in partnership with my Fuji X-T3. I'll talk a little bit more about cameras later in the video, but it's never let me down. I found that in partnership with my camera, the autofocus has worked very well. The lens is still in fantastic condition. I've obviously looked after it, but it still looks just like new and it really has never let me down. I've continued to be impressed with the image quality. I love the look of the images that it helps capture. And I really don't have many negatives, if at all any, that I can say about this lens. So it's been a fantastic performer for me over almost the last year. Since when I purchased this lens, I've been using it on my Fuji X-T3 when doing wildlife photography. I have got a lot of experience with the Fuji X-T3 and the X-T4, but I've not used any of the newer X-series bodies. So everything that you see in terms of photographs and all video that you see will have been filmed on my X-T3. And first, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. I do have memories of a lot of people saying and commenting to me that the Fuji X-T3 or X-T4 are not fantastic for moving wildlife. So, for example, birds in flight. Now, I do acknowledge that many of the newer cameras will be better. And me personally, I would love to try one of the newer X series bodies. I really hope to have one of those at some point. I think it would be a fantastic partnership to have something like an X-H2S, an X-H2, or an X-D5 in partnership with 
this lens here for wildlife photography. I think that would be a fantastic combination. And why do I think that? Well, that's because on my X-T3 with this lens, I found it really good for moving wildlife. Uh, I, I acknowledge and believe, although I've not tried them, I firmly believe one of the newer cameras would be better. Their autofocus system as a whole is better. Uh, I think the X-H2S will be the very best of the bunch, but the X-H2 and the X-T5 should be fantastic as well. So I think as a whole they're going to be better. Uh, my camera, the X-T3, doesn't have, say, bird detect autofocus, so it's not going to lock onto bird for me. I have to firmly decide what I want to focus on myself before engaging the autofocus. So there are going to be advantages, but I've had very good results on my X-T3. And as I say, newer cameras will be better, but I think getting good results is based on a number of things and we can't be too quick to blame our tools. So for example, there's camera settings, there's technique, uh, there's knowledge or just of wildlife photography in general. There's a lot you can do and settings you can tweak and so on to get better results. And I've actually found that uh, my X-T3 with this lens does quite good in terms of autofocus, even for birds in flight. One of the key things I'd like to talk about in this video is my experience over the last year using this lens, considering the variable aperture is f5.6 to f8. I get a lot of questions about this, people talking about f8, saying it's no use for wildlife photography. So they're aware that if they're fully zoomed in on this lens at 600 millimeters, the widest they can get their aperture is f8. So they're thinking they're going to be using a really fast shutter speed at f8. They're going to raise their ISO very high and image quality is going to be poor. I get a lot of questions about this. I can't talk for everyone, I can only talk for myself and the type of wildlife photography that I do and the conditions that I shoot in and so on. But I will say for general use over the last year, as I thought would be the case when I bought the lens, as I mentioned months ago in my full review, for me this aperture, the aperture values on this lens are absolutely fine for wildlife photography. I mostly shoot in good light, but even if light is not optimal, there's still not a major problem with this lens. There's a number of things to consider, and things have even improved since I made my initial review video. So first of all, in terms of the X-T3 and X-T4, considering their sensor size, I think they handle higher ISO values quite well. That's been my experience. Now things are even better for us as wildlife photographers because there's been a number of advancements in software. So for example, even Lightroom now offers better noise reduction. So higher ISO values are not as intimidating or scary uh, as they once were. So the combination of camera body and software goes a long way to eliminating a lot of the issues. I captured this photograph of a roe deer at ISO 8000 and with some noise reduction applied I am really happy with the result. This doesn't mean that I can always shoot at ISO 8000 without giving it any thought. Think of this more as an example of what is possible at higher ISO levels. But we also need to remember, depending on our subject, we don't always need to be using a very fast shutter speed. So, for example, if it's just a deer eating something in a field that's not moving around, we don't need a tremendously fast shutter speed so we can keep those ISO values down. Um, also, the lens has got OIS stabilization, and I find that quite impressive to be honest. My XT3 camera body doesn't have IBIS, so again, if I'd one of the newer X series bodies, as well as the advantages of autofocus improvements, that uh, the, those camera bodies would have IBIS as well. So I think that would be even better for me. Now, of course, if you need to use a really, really fast shutter speed for a, say, a fast-moving bird in flight, then IBIS isn't going to help you keep your ISO values down. But for quite 
slow moving subject, OIS on the lens and indeed IBIS in your camera can be a great benefit and help you keep those ISO values down. Another thing to remember is that if you're shooting, for example, fully zoomed in at 600 millimeters and you're quite close to perhaps a small bird, then the depth of field is going to be very, very shallow. So for me, I think f8 is a good aperture to have. Sometimes I close it down even more to get more depth of field. And it's just something to think about. Would you really want to shoot at, say, f2 if you were at uh, 600 millimeters and quite close to a small bird? So we've got all these types of things to think about. It would be wrong of me to sit here and say that this lens here, if you've got a compatible Fuji camera body, then this lens is the very best choice for you and your wildlife photography. No matter what you shoot, no matter when you shoot, no matter the lighting conditions, this lens will be the very best choice. That's wrong. I, I can't say that, obviously. But I think for most people who shoot, say, a variety of subjects, and shoot at different times of the day and so on, I do think this is going to be an excellent lens which will deliver results that you really, really enjoy. I like to think of it this way. If, for example, I was always doing my wildlife photography from a hide and I'm always shooting deer. Deer are quite large and I know they're going to be quite close to the hide. They're not going to see me. Then I don't think this lens, the XF 150-600mm lens, is the very best tool for the job. It can do the job, but it's not the very best tool for the job. In terms of a wildlife lens, I think the XF 200mm, which I think is an f2 aperture, that would probably be the ultimate tool for the job. It's a fantastic lens, I believe. I've never tried it. I would absolutely love to try it. I think it would be fantastic in some situations. Quite an expensive lens, but it would be really, really good. And in the situation that I just described, I think that lens would be an excellent choice. The lens I have here in front of me could still do the job, but arguably you may get better results from the other lens. So that's how I like to think of it. But if you're just shooting, you know, a variety of subjects, you're going to be at a variety of different distances. Sometimes you're going to be shooting small birds that are further away then this lens right here, for most people who shoot a variety of different subjects, a variety of distances and different lighting conditions and so on, I really do think that this lens will be a fantastic choice for them. So I've talked about that scenario of being in a hide shooting deer. But if we think for a second about this scenario here over my right shoulder, this is a Kingfisher shot with the XF 150 to 600 millimeter lens. And if in that scenario I had been using the XF 200 millimeter, I wouldn't have got nearly as good a shot. I would have just been too far away from my subject. I couldn't have got any closer. The subject would have been much smaller in the frame. You didn't see the same level of detail. I couldn't have got the composition correct in camera the way I wanted it. So on the other end of the spectrum, you can clearly see how the XF 150-600mm lens offers so much variety and can certainly help you capture images that you wouldn't be able to get with a much shorter focal length. The other thing that I really like about being able to go to say 600 millimeters is that it really helps me uh, achieve two of my main goals when I'm doing wildlife photography. My main goal, which I can't always do, is to try and get my photographs without the subject that I'm photographing even knowing if I'm there. So for example, if I'm out walking about, I'm not in a hide, I'm quite often able to photograph deer and they don't even know that I'm there because I can keep my distance. And that's great for me because I know I'm not disturbing them in any way. And my number two goal, if I can't achieve number one, then if the subject is going to see me, 
I like to be able to photograph it while knowing that I'm not disturbing it or causing it any undue stress and it's going about its business normally as if I wasn't there. So for example, let's say I was photographing a robin. Well, they're most likely going to see that I'm there. But with this lens, I'm able to stay at a distance, get the shots I want, get the composition the way I want it. And the small bird, say for example the robin, it doesn't fly off, it's not bothered that I'm there. And that type of thing is really important to me when I'm doing wildlife photography. There's many more things important in the world than me and my photographs and really the things that we're photographing are the most important things and this lens helps me get the results that I want without disturbing my subjects. Here is an example of how I was able to approach, photograph and back away from this deer without it ever knowing I was there. Of course some of this comes down to technique, but with the longer focal lens offered by this lens I often find that I can leave my subject undisturbed, which is extremely important to me. I feel great joy that I was able to observe and photograph this deer while letting it go about its business oblivious to my existence. This is much more important to me than trying to get as close to wildlife as possible or chasing views and likes on social media. Now on to one of the most important parts of the video and as I said over the last week for a few days during that period I've been out doing some wildlife photography with my Fuji X-T3 and the XF 150-600mm lens. I've captured some images, I've captured some video footage, a variety of things in different conditions and so on. So I want to show some of that now and it'll just help hopefully give an indication of the type of quality that you can expect from this lens.
So I'd like to make a couple of points about the focal length range offered by this lens. 150 millimeters up to 600 millimeters, I think, in my opinion, is a fantastic focal length range for wildlife photography. It's going to offer us up so many opportunities. But you will still find that even at 600 millimeters, there are going to be times in wildlife photography you can't get your subject as large in the frame as you would want it. Uh, that's just how wildlife photography works. Sometimes we can't get close enough to our subject. That can be for, I guess, two main reasons. One is physical restraints and restraints created by the terrain that we're in. And two is obviously respecting our subjects. We don't want to get too close that we're disturbing whatever we're photographing. So just because it zooms into 600 millimeters, don't think that you're never going to have a a subject that's too small in your frame again because that certainly won't be the case. The other thing is that at these really long focal lengths, say 600 millimeters, if you're taking photographs or shooting video, you need to have really good technique. So any flaws in your technique are going to show up in your end images or video. So it's just something to bear in mind. I think this lens produces or offers us a great opportunity with a focal length range and zooming into 600 millimeters, but don't think wildlife photography is just going to be easy or a walk in the park. There's more things that come into it than just the gear, obviously. Before I give my final thoughts on this Fuji lens, here is a quick glimpse of a future video that will be appearing on my channel. In this upcoming video, I will be talking about my fantastic experience photographing puffins, and I will have lots of photographs and video to show. So if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to be notified when I upload that video. In summary, I can honestly say that as I near a year of use with this lens, the Fuji XF 150-600mm, I love the lens. I've been delighted with my purchase. It's not let me down. The build quality is great. The image quality is great. And I feel it's been a real asset to my wildlife photography. I've even shot some landscapes with it as well. It doesn't get as much use for that, but I have used it and I've been really pleased with the results for those types of photographs as well. I previously owned the XF 100-400mm to 400 millimeter lens. I also had the 1.4x teleconverter for that lens and I got rid of those and I replaced them with the 150-600mm to 600mm lens and I don't regret that for a second at all. I think it is a fantastic choice. As I said, I've been using the X-T3. There are newer X-series bodies which will offer even better autofocus. And again, I think that would even help further my wildlife photography. But even with the camera that I've got, I've been delighted with the results. And I really do recommend this lens. Can I say it's the lens for everyone? No, who could? But if your needs are similar to mine and you're shooting a variety of subjects in different conditions and so on and you want to have that 600 millimeter focal length available then i think it's a fantastic lens in the right hands as always i want to thank you so much for watching don't forget to check out my full review of the lens if you haven't seen that one i've got more wildlife uh, photography videos on my channel and also lots of landscape photography ones as well so feel free to check those out if you are interested but for now thank you so much for watching and i'll hopefully see you in my next video